to the house of God, huh? now for your own soul's sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this Bible. Right? woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonor her head so if the sister if your wife has her head uncovered what is she doing to her head she's dishonoring you no you're her head Christ is your head so the same way you took off your hat was because of Christ because the word of God is the spirit of prophecy give me that in uh, Revelations 19 and 10 the words that are coming out the scriptures is the spirit of prophecy this is Christ speaking right now so we have to honor our head read this is the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 10 and I fell at his feet to worship him he fell at the feet of Christ read and he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see that right there? So when we speak it about Christ, it is the spirit of prophecy. Yes. So that's how you honor your God. All right, so now, so now. Let me ask you another question. What example did Christ leave us? Because the officer was talking about uh, the dietary law. Okay? Okay. Oh, so now, one more thing real quick. One more thing real quick. Let me ask you a question. Can your hair naturally grow? The hair on top of your head. Okay? Because we have some brothers who their hair cannot grow. So if you turn around, Officer Reuben. If you look at Officer, the, the man behind you, Reuben. His hair cannot grow naturally on the top of his head. Whatever grows, he allows it to grow. Okay, so now, you said your hair can grow, correct? So give me Leviticus chapter uh, chapter 19. Give me that. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 27. Bring it out. He shall not round the corners of your head. One second, my brother, come up here, come up here. I'm your brother Mark. Yeah, come up here and... and, and are you good? Okay, listen good. All right, what's your name? What's that? Kareem. Nice to meet you, my brother. Listen good. So we're going over scriptures, the laws and commandments of God, what we should do to make sure we're setting an example in following Christ. All right, so read that. Hold on, my brother. Hold on, hold on. Come back over here. We're showing you love, my brother. Actually, read Leviticus 19, 17 first. This is why we're doing this for you, my brother. It's not just for you. It's for all of Israel's edification. Read. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So how do I show you hatred? It's going to explain. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. To correct your neighbor. I'm supposed to correct you. Say, nah, bro. You can't look at the other brother's wife. You can't be dealing with the other brother's wife. My brother, your hair can grow. Let your hair grow. That's the commandments of God. That's showing you love. If I see that and I say, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to let the brother, you know, we can bring out the scriptures and let the brother keep the hat on his head, break the commandment. Not, not let the brother know that he got he can let his hair grow, but he should not cut his hair. That would show that I hate you. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. So if I allowed you to continue, I would allow you to sin. So the reason why my brother, he took his hat off and what he did was because he's showing dishonor when the scriptures are coming out. By having his head covered. So any man, when the word of God is coming out, he has to uncover his head. But our sisters have to cover their head. Because the man is their head and Christ is the man's head. Alright, that's what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So now, keep reading. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither 
neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. That's talking about balding your head, cutting off your hair. And you know how some, what is it called when the brother, uh, they do the, the thing with their beard, they cut off the corners of their beard? What is it called? The chin strap. We're not supposed to do that. Those are ancient Egyptian customs we ain't supposed to be doing. All right, keep reading. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. Tattoos, things like tattoos as well. For the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. That's what God said. Give me Leviticus 18 and 1. So a lot of the customs and things that we do in this captivity is things that we've done in the past when we was enslaved, right. okay? So America is spiritual Egypt and Sodom. Right. It's the same thing. Watch this. Give me, um before we get that, give me uh Revelations 11 and verse 8. Give me Revelations 11 and 8. Watch this. America is Egypt. And we're going to go to that and do the Romney. Show y'all that. All right? Read. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 11 and verse 8. Bring it up. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. We, these are the dead bodies you're seeing. The great city is America. Right. The dead bodies are the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans that are asleep according to the laws of God. Right. That are not keeping the laws of God. Right. When we turn around and you look, what are we doing today? Today is the Lord's Sabbath. Right. We are here robbing, stealing, buying, selling, committing adultery, right. not keeping the commandments of God. Right. These are the dead spirits right now. Right. And what we're doing out here is to edify and show and teach our people right. who we are according to the commandments of God. Right. All right, don't go away, my brother. You try to slip away, come back over here. This is for your edification. Give me one second. Give me uh, give me uh, Leviticus 18 and one. Stay right here, my brother. This is love. You listening, my brother? You have any questions? You can have some in a few. All right, watch this. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 18 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses. The Lord spake unto Moses. Moses is the one the Lord used to deliver the 12 tribes of Israel out of Egypt, right. out of captivity. Watch this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak to who? The children of Israel. No, the Chinese man. Children of Israel. The white man. Children of Israel, read and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Read. After the doings of the land of Egypt, everything that was done in the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, where we used to dwell for the 400 years we was in captivity, shall ye not do. God said, don't do those things. Hey. So the reason why we're reading in Leviticus, not to have our uh, bald our heads, Okay, not to put tattoos on our flesh is because those were customs we was doing in Egypt. Right. Read. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall ye not do. You see that? So the Lord brought us out of Egypt and the promised land he gave us in Canaan, that was going to be our land. But guess what? There were other nations that was in the land that was living there. So the things that they were doing, the Lord said that when you come there, don't pick up the things that they're doing as well. Right. All right, so give me Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Any questions, my brother? All right, so what did you learn so far? I want to make sure we're paying attention. What did you hear so far? I'm listening. You're just listening. All right, so let me ask you this question real quick. Does God want us just to listen to his word, or does he want us to apply his commandments? I'm going to ask you the question. He wants us to apply. So how do we apply the commandments of God? You have to listen, but how do you apply it? Doing his work. Okay, so you have to live by it, right? All right, give me Sirach chapter 19. Give me Sirach 19, 19 and 20. All right, so when we hear the word of God, we have to do the commandments as well. Slide up a little bit, my brother. You good? All right, that's cool. All right. All right, understand, understand. Watch this. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 19. Bring it out. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him. So say that again. Listen good, my brother. They that do what? Things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. So we have to listen and do to get eternal life. Right. Read. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. The wisdom is what of the law? The performance of the law. It's the performance of the law. Right. So now, my brother, I'm your brother Mark, what's your name? What's your name? Yeah, your name. You come on up here. You listening? What does it mean to perform? 
Okay, let me ask you, what does it mean to perform? To apply. My brother, it means to apply. So now, what is a law that Jesus Christ applied? You believe in Christ? You believe in God? Okay, so if you believe in God, you believe in Christ. Okay, so what is one thing that Christ did that he applied? He did what? As far as the commandments. What commandments did he keep? What commandments did God, what commandments did God keep? My brother back there. What example did Christ do when he was keeping the law? What, thi what things did he perform when he was on the earth? Okay, you don't know. Do you, do you have anything? Okay. He performed miracles. What commandments did he keep? Okay, he, okay. He kept himself from sin. Okay, you're looking for that. So now, watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch. And my brother, if you have any questions, I got you. I got you, if you have any questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I talked to him earlier. Yeah, if you have any questions, I got you, bro. So now, so now, give me Luke chapter 4, verse 16. I'm going to show you something. This is an example that Christ left. This is an example that Christ did. So when it says to do the commandments, this is what Christ did when he was on the earth. This is the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. So Christ came to Nazareth where he was raised, where he was brought up as a child. Read. As his custom was. And it was his custom to do what is getting ready to explain. Read. He went into the synagogue. He went into where? He went into the synagogue. And what did Christ do in the synagogue? On the Sabbath day. He did it on the Sabbath day. And stood up for to read. So Christ was reading and teaching on the Sabbath days in the synagogue. Yes, but who was he teaching in the synagogue? Give me John chapter 18 verse 20. It's very important for us to understand who Christ was teaching. Who are we teaching right now? Who are we teaching right? The so-called what? The black, Hispanic, and Native American. Hey. But this is who you truly are according to the Bible. Watch this. This is the book of John, chapter 18 and verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. So Christ taught in the temple and in the synagogues where the who resorted at? The Jews. Hey. Okay, you are a Jew according to the Bible. How you doing, my brother? I'm Brother Mark. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, Brown. Brown. So you got a question. Stay, stay here. Listen good. What's your question? Oh, no, no. You good. That, that's a great question. So now, watch this. So this is what we're showing. So if you look at this sign right here. Let me, you asked the question, right? You asked the question, right? No, I'm answering your question. You, you asked the question, right? So when you ask a question, you listen for the what? The answer. Watch this. Everything we speak is the oracles of God. We don't lean our own understanding. The reason why, you, when you go up and you ask and you talk to different blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they got different doctrines, different philosophies, different all kinds of foolishness. It's because it's their own mind. So when we speak, we're going, thus saith the Lord God. So now, your question, why are we why are we mentioning black, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Because they're black too. No. Yes, they, watch this. We're gonna, let, let, let me explain to you. You asked your question. Let me answer your question, my brother. Be patient. I got you. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Just, listen, listen. Step over here. Watch this. This sign here makes up the 12 tribes of Israel. All right? Okay, but hold on. But it, you don't know about it because you don't understand it yet. Okay? Okay, I'll repeat the question for you. The question was, we were, I was mentioning black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. My good brother's question here was, why are we talking about the Hispanics and Native Americans? So I'm getting ready to show my brother using the church of God, Ezekiel 37. The reason why this is set up like this is because it's in the Bible. All right, so now, the blacks, his, the Hispanics and Native Americans are on this chart as well. And we're gonna show you that in the scriptures. All right, so now, when you look at Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, Judah is the American blacks. Jesus Christ is a so-called black man. He came out of the tribe of Judah, according to uh, Hebrews 7 and 14. 
All right. So now Benjamin, the prophet Paul, come from the tribe of Benjamin. My my uh, my father's from uh, Trinidad. My mother's from Guyana. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. These are the brothers from the West Indies. So the tribe of Levi, this will be Moses. These are the so-called Haitians. Now this, these three make up the southern kingdom of Israel. During in the history of 2 Kings chapter 12, or 1 Kings chapter 12, there was a split in our kingdom. Southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and northern kingdom would be Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, Gad, all the way down. So like Ephraim, these are your so-called Puerto Ricans today, okay? Manessa, these are your so-called Cubans. What language do they speak, the Cubans and the Manessa? Spanish. Spanish. But, but I got, hold on. So now when you look at Gad, just jump down to Gad. Gad is the American Indians. So now I'm going to show you something according to the scriptures. Give me second address. Americans. How, why are we saying that they're the Israelites? Why are we including them in there? Because they are the Israelites as well. But we don't understand how they got here. Have you heard about the Native American Indians? Go ahead. Okay. No, no, that, uh, 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 that's Issachar. So Issachar my bad, I can't see it. Issachar is the Mexicans. They have the 12 tribes too. Yeah, they're right there too. So everybody we're mentioning is in the scriptures. So we're going to show you how they came together to the Americas. They didn't come one another. They came together. You wanted to understand why we were saying the Mexicans. But we want to show you. So now when somebody asks you the same question, you're going to be able to edify them. You understand? So now when we go to 2nd Ezra 13 and 40, read this. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13 and verse 40. Those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. And see that? Those are the 10 tribes. So outside of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, these tribes are the other. Dan was also on there at a time, okay? But it's talking about the 10 tribes of Israel. Watch this. In the time of Hosea the king, whom Solomon Nasser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. So you can read about this history in 2 Kings 17, verse 1 down to 3 and 4. Okay, this is going into history where uh, the Assyrian king came into the land of Israel, the northern kingdom tribes, and took them out of Israel, their homeland, into Assyria, into slavery. Watch this. And he carried them over the waters. Into slavery, into the land of Assyria. Watch this. And so came they into another land. But they took this council amongst themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country. Well, so hold on. They will go forth into a, listen good, into a, we're trying to explain it to you right now. All right, so, 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 so hold on. Okay, okay. Okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So, what do you not understand? What do you not understand? Who are the Native American Indians? So, how do you learn if you don't read? Okay. Oh, so your thing is when you go to the Bible, you get confused. All right. So how? Okay. So understood. Understood. Okay, all right. So, but the, okay, so let me ask you this. How do we gain understanding in the scriptures? How would you gain understanding? Give me Psalms 111 and 10. All right, so let me show you something. The reason why you don't understand, every question you have is in the scriptures. 
Right. Give me Psalms 111, verse 10. Bring it up. Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So what does it mean for us to fear God? No, I'm, I'm not, we're not, we're, I'm trying to get you to understand something. Just listen for a second. What it means to fear God is keeping his laws. Right. So for example, today is the Sabbath day according to Exodus 20 and 8. The, today is the Sabbath day. This is a day that we rest from the world. You don't buy food. You don't sell anything. If you have a business or anything like that, you rest, you gather, you, you gather with your brothers and sisters. You don't cook on the Sabbath day. That's a law. The only way we're going to understand the Bible is if you begin to start doing those things. So the reason why you don't understand is because you're not currently keeping God's laws. So you have to be taught the laws of God. Okay, so now, finish it out. Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. If you, you're going to get a good understanding if you begin to do his commandments. That's not hard to understand. That's not hard to understand. Okay, it's very, it's very plain. If now, if I were... If, no, no, look, we take no offense to that. How you doing, my brother? I'm good. about the Trinity. Okay, so what's your question? He didn't have a question. Well, he he wanted, you know, he wanted to explain, he wants you to explain to me what your aspect. My aspect is like the Trinity is one, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Can nobody convince me no otherwise? The sixth one is so I've studied this. I attend the seminar of Dr. Stanley. So, okay. what you guys do is excellent. I have to take them all of the points side together. You with the book from the I can't believe in everything. Mm, okay. As long as peace and understanding, that's what I do. Okay, so so what? Give me Amos chapter 3, verse 3 real quick. All right, we're going to start there, and I'm going to show you exactly. No, you uh, can't show me. You can tell. No, well, yeah, well, look. Are you going to listen? You just came up here and spoke. All right, so we're going to so we're gonna do our part now. Okay. All right, that's that's one thing with black people. we got to learn to, when we yeah. say our peace, let the other brother have his peace after. That's but when we listen to the white man, when we go to the white man's schools and studies, we listen to him. Now we want to walk away. Read. See, that's it right there. His God is the white man. Give me Romans chapter 1. His God is the white man. That's what's wrong with our people. This is what's wrong with our Read that. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? The white man changed the truth of God into a lie. The truth of God are the commandments of God. That's the truth. Read. And worship and serve the creature. Who is the creature that the, that saw some of our black people are worshiping? The so-called white man. The minute I name the white man, the so-called black brother runs away. Right. Why is that? Because the white man is his God. That's right. You don't even want to give your brother a second to talk to you. That's the self-hatred we have for each other. Read. Worship and serve the creature more than the creator. So who's the creator? How you doing, my brother? I'm your brother, Mark. How you doing, sis? Come on up here. Come on up here. She said she's trying to get right. She needs some love. Underst understood. Okay, you're trying to gain understanding. Come on up here, sis. You can stay up here, my brother. So you're trying to get right. Okay, so let me ask you a quick. You can stand back right there, because I'm probably going to use it. No, you're good. You're good. Probably going to use this for you. So let me ask you this. So you said you're trying to get right with God. Okay, understood. Give me Proverbs 3 and 5. Okay, so you asked for my opinion, right? Okay, so watch this. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. So, we don't have our own opinions. Our, we follow the doctrine of God. That's right. There's, we don't have our own thoughts, our own opinion. We follow and we do what God says. Okay, give me Proverbs 4 and 2. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. So the good doctrine is the same doctrine Christ was, was, was teaching, right. the laws of God. So what we're teaching and showing our people is the commandments of God. Right. So do you believe in Christ? Okay, so when you say getting together of yourself, does that, are you saying you don't believe in everything with God, in Christ? I'm not saying no, I'm not saying yes or no. 
Okay, so you're not saying yes or no. So let me, okay, so let me ask you this. What is your nationality? Give me uh, Isaiah 1 and 3. What is your nationality? No. American. Okay, all right. So I'm glad you answered because, but I want to show you why we think these things. Okay, watch this. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth its owner, and the ass his master's crib. So we both know what an ass and an ox is, right? They're both dumb animals. Watch this. But Israel doth not know. So now, why is God saying using an ox and an ass and saying they know who their master is, right. but then he says Israel don't know? Why would Israel are people? So who are the only race of people on the earth who don't know who they are? Some black people say I'm an American. Some blacks say I'm black. Right. Some of us talk about we're Muslims. Some of them say we're Christians. A lot of that stuff is just religion. Right. Okay? Right. So what we have to understand is who are we according to the Bible? Right. What, what does God say we are? Okay? So let me ask you this question. Who's your, who's your, where's your father from? Where's your father from? Okay, so he's a, uh, he's a so-called American black. He's an American black. So I want you to look at this chart. The American blacks, according to the Bible, is from the tribe of Judah. So your father would be from the tribe of Judah. But what's important about that is we need to identify why is this important? Who else comes from the tribe of Judah? We're going to show you in the scriptures what other famous and the most important man on the earth comes from the tribe of Judah. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So Jesus Christ came out of the lineage of Judah. That's right. So Christ came out of the lineage of Judah. So now we understand that. Let's see what color Christ was. Give me Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. Let's see who Christ is. Very important. The reason why we don't know who we are because we went many days without an image of who our God is. Many days in captivity. Read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So it says the, reve the revelation, meaning the revealing of who Jesus Christ is. So John is getting ready to reveal to us who Christ is. Give me uh, verse 11. Verse 11, say, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. And what you see, John, write it down in a book. If I was gonna describe who you are, and write you down in a book, what color would I put your skin as? Dark brown. What texture would I put your hair as? Woolly texture here, right? I'll put a little bit of gray, some black, and a little bit of grays in there. I would put that in there, right? So now, keep reading. And send it unto the seven churches. So we're the church of God. God wanted us to see the image of who he is in the last days, because why? Somebody was gonna go and distort that information and destroy that information. Give me verse 13. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. This is a description of what Christ was wearing. He had a garment on down to the foot. In those days, we wore sandals so you could see Christ's feet. And he had a golden belt around his holding his garment together. Reading. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So there's two things that John has given us. He's given us color, white, and he's given us texture in wool. What race of people have woolly textured hair? Look behind you. Look at the here. Yeah, you have it. Look at this brother over here. He's got woolly textured hair. That's a black man. So when you look at this image right here that's pushed all over the earth. Seizure Borgia, he has yellow stringy hair. He got horse hair. That's not the image that the Bible is describing. Right. This family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models.
destroy 